Hi folks, well today I'm going to talk about electric bikes, battery packs and easy ways to uh, overvolt and overclock your bikes. So I actually have two different electric bikes. This one's my posh electric bike, and this, this is the good one. Um, this is where I ended up. I haven't actually used this much in the last three or four years, but I have modified it, so I've got um, my old smartphone. So I haven't used it in three or four years, so the uh, dashboard mount is still for the old phone, but that gave me GPS and sat-nav. Um, 900 lumen LED flashlight on it, and of course a speedometer. And uh, this bike is a Kalkoff Agatu, and it's a Panasonic Pedelec system bike, which um, this unit down here is a unit from Panasonic that they sell to lots of different manufacturers. And it comes with a 10 amp hour, seven cell lithium manganese pack, which knocks out 25.9 volts, if I remember rightly. Um, now, I used to use this and I used to do some very, very long distance rides. So I used to ride down to the south coast, which is sort of 75, 80 miles. And um, on a 10 amp hour pack, I could get about 25 or so. So many years ago, I modified this bike a bit and I added in the back an additional 20 amp hour pack. And you'll notice it's secured with a wrap strap to hold it all down. Uh, I've got it connected on with these um, amp connectors, which are rated, I think these are 20 amp rated and they're really handy because you can make up your own connector patterns the blocks slide together so you can key them and make them your own way so that's my 20 amp 9 cell lithium phosphorus lithium iron phosphorus battery pack that I put together now it says on here my first charge was in 28th of July 2009 so that packs already five and a half years old um, it's been absolutely flawless I would happily buy another one the same um, last time I checked the capacity, which was only in the summertime, it was still 20 amp hour capacity. It doesn't seem to have degraded at all. So, very happy with that battery chemistry. It's been superb. Because the two packs I'm using are different chemistries and different voltages, you can't just connect both the battery packs together because otherwise the pack with the higher voltage would charge the pack with the lower voltage. And in the case of my lithium manganese pack, that would be overcharging the pack. So, that would be very bad. So. What I did was I hooked up this socket in here made out of these little amp connectors um, which allows me to take the power from the onboard battery and the power from the external battery and run both of those through a shock key diode which is, you can just see the outline of the package heat shrunk in here. Um, it's actually two shock key diodes in one TO220 package. When I'm not using that, I can just plug in this little connector here, which just connects the onboard battery background to the motor controller. Um, I ended up using this socket because it was so tight for space down there and getting something that was convenient and out of the way and flexible and easy enough to plug in and out, that, that worked really well for me. Now, a few years ago, I took this Panasonic Pedelec unit to pieces, um, mostly because I wanted to check the internals could handle the higher voltage from this battery pack, which they can, they seem to be good up to 35 volts, um, but also because I wanted to see what was inside it and whether I could customise any of the electronics. Um, now, it wasn't an easy job taking this to pieces. I actually had to weld together my own crown spanner. Very hard to find the right tools to dismantle that unit, so I made my own. Now, I'll show you some pictures while I'm talking here of what's inside this unit. Um, the actual main circuit board is covered with a big thick conformal coating to stop damp ingress and to stop corrosion inside it. So um, there wasn't much scope for making many modifications to the circuit board, but I did find that the current measuring shunt in there stuck out a long way from the top of the board. And as this unit is um, software limited to 250 watts, I thought I'd uh, see what happened if I 
modified the current shunt and um, lowered the resistance of the current shunt a bit and unsurprisingly yes you get more output power. If I was designing a unit like this I would be looking at the maximum current the motor could draw and the maximum voltage the batteries could supply and I would choose my semiconductors according to those parameters. Then software limiting later on inside the microcontroller and I figured that's exactly what whoever designed this was doing so I thought I'd take the chance with the current shunt and that was five years ago and it's still working fine so um, thumbs up for that. So my history with electric bikes all started out with this thing here. Um, this is not a good quality bike. The uh, throttle and the battery meter was mounted upside down on it with um, high at the bottom low at the top and you had to turn the throttle the wrong way to get the bike to go. This thing weighs a ton. This thing is close to unrideable in almost all conditions but there is one thing I discovered this bike does very very well. It works really really great in snow. When there's two foot of snow on the ground this bike is a superb form of transport. Um, I don't know if it's because it's got such chunky tyres. I don't know if it's because of the tremendous weight of the huge lead acid battery. My goodness, that thing weighs a ton. Um, but when it's snowing, that bike is the way to get around. Now, I've actually had a go before at repairing, at replacing one of these battery packs because the same as Julian's, my, my lead acid cells died. And, um, well, here's one I broke earlier. Uh, it, this has uh, these 8 amp hour lead acid batteries in, and I realised that I could um, replace them with a huge number of uh, 4 amp hour nickel metal hydride cells, and I could get that pack up to a 12 amp hour 36 volt nickel metal hydride pack instead. And I took it for a test drive and um, I realised I was only getting 8 amp hour capacity out of the pack so somewhere inside one of my soldered connections, it was all just soldered like this, must have come off one of the cells. As I was inserting it all back together um, it nicked the plastic on one of these cells like that and that then caused a short inside the pack and I very quickly had to get all the pack out of there. Um, later on I tried um, lining the inside of the pack with with um, duct tape but unfortunately that meant the cells wouldn't fit back in again so uh, that was the end of that and I've had this in a state of disrepair ever since given that the only time of the year when I can actually use this bike is when it's snowy I didn't see the point in um, spending the money getting new lead acids so my idea was to take this 29.7 volt lithium iron phosphorus pack add a 600 watt boost converter to take it up to 42 volts or so and um, see if I could find a way of strap that, strapping that to this bike so that when it does snow I can use it. However, um, I think my plan is flawed because this exactly, precisely is the wrong size to fit in there. So that plan needs a rethink. Anyway, I'm going to talk to you about this battery pack for a while. So I thought I'd give you a quick look at what I've done to this battery pack. Um, it's going to be the first time in uh, five years since this has been opened, but just for you folks, just because I'm good like this, I'll cut through my duct tape. Probably shouldn't do it while it's still charging. There we go. And there's my... Uh, rather pleased with that. I think that looks really quite smart at the end of it all. So what this is, is this is nine um, rectangular prismatic cells they're called and each cell is 20 amp hours. Um, the battery tabs come up in between these bits of foam to little just um, it's FR4 circuit board at the top just with solder pads on so the tags can connect together so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cells all together and you can see the last cell here I've just taken some copper clad board cut slots in it so I can feed the tabs through um, which is all these are, they're just copper clad board with slots cut in them 
and the tabs feed up from the batteries and then get soldered down onto the plates. So originally this pack was an 8 cell pack and it came with this 8 cell BMS board. Now I quite like the BMS system on these batteries, on this pack, because as you can see there's a red light for each of the cells and the red light indicates that the cell has reached its maximum voltage and now this BMS is discharging a little current. It's only quite limited, I think it's 100 milliamps. Um, the BMS kicks in discharging the cells when they hit 3.3 volts if I recall correctly and if a cell hits 3.4 volts then it disconnects the charger altogether. Um, and when you do disconnect the charger you start to get the pretty dance of lights on the front as it decides different cells respectively need power draining off them, sapping off them. Um, this charger was originally a 30 volt 4 amp charger and on the back of this part of the board this is all the high voltage side over here this is the low voltage side here so I took this board out um, I didn't plug it into the mains while I was modifying this when I make modifications on switch mode power supplies like, like this um, I try my best to find some safe way of dealing with high voltages and what I actually do is I run it off a 50 watt inverter connected to a current limited power supply so I set my power supply so that no more than um, 6 watts of power could ever come out of it I set 12 volts half amp current limit so I knew that no matter what if I touched something I was never going to get a full power station's worth of energy transferred into me um, yes I'd still get a nasty shock but hopefully nothing fatal and the power would cut off very quickly but on the back of this board there's a bunch of resistors, it's loaded both sides. I'm not going to take the circuit board out just to show you that. Am I? Yeah, why not? Only two screws. You can see down here where I've added an extra resistor on there just to tweak the output from the default 30 volts up to 33 volts. Um, I figured a 10% tweak on it was probably permissible and it seems to be working okay. Again, I did this five years ago now, so I imagine anything that was gonna go wrong would have already gone wrong on it. Now, in addition to this charging brick that it came with, um, before I modified that, I also got hold of a Bantam E-Station 902, which is much like the uh, Turnergy charger, AccuCell charger that um, Julian's just got, but this will do up to 12 series lithium ion phosphorus, lithium polymer, um, lead acid batteries up to 40 volts. It's basically the same unit but with a 250 watt output instead of 150. Um, it doesn't have the charge balancers built in but it does connect via a serial cable to these external pack balancers. Um, this didn't actually work out too well because the way the BMS on board works is when it decides that the batteries hit a high enough voltage it disconnects the charger and when the charger gets disconnected it thinks that's a fault with charging so I couldn't actually really use this charger very well along with the BMS it charges it 80% but once this starts to detect cells are hitting their maximum voltage it just disconnects that but what I can do is um, these chargers work these pack balancers work independently of the battery of the charger so I can hook at these two and when it gets the second one they'll start communicating with each other and it'll, there we are that means the pack balancers are all happy um, I tend to use these balancers on this battery with this charger purely because these balancers can drain up to 500 milliamps per cell whereas the built-in BMS only does 100 milliamps per cell so actually it's a lot faster to balance the pack using these two um, pack balancers um, when it's charged with the uh, default charger. Anyway, just one more thing I wanted to show you, which will explain questions that nobody ever asked. So just as a final aside here, one of the reasons I wanted this boost converter and this step-down power supply, which I'll have to do a review of at some point, was um, my black power supply only gives me 90 watts of output power, but with this I can boost up to 60 volts at 10 amps there gives me 600 watts in, this is a 300 watt power supply so I can get 60 volts at 5 amps out there and it lets me run some interesting loads like this old washing machine motor so we've got that started up on 7 volts there 
that I'll crank the bolts up a bit. Quite fun. Oh, I do like playing with my toys. See ya.